Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to turn your Obsidian notes into a fully responsive website for free and I'm going to show you everything from the initial setup to custom theming like I have done here and also showing you how to host this. So let's start off with a quick demo showing you what you are going to be able to create. Obsidian is a note taking application where you write using markdown and you can quickly link between notes and uh, this is a note note and yeah jump around uh, just like that and boom we have formed a link if you're interested in learning more about obsidian i have created a whole video covering my workflow taking notes as a programmer so check that out if you haven't already but in this video i am gonna assume you have some experience using obsidian and i want to show you this really cool project i found called quartz which lets you turn your obsidian vault into a fully interactive website so on the right side here we have the graph view that we all <laughs> like to fiddle around with in obsidian and uh, yeah the linking works just as you would expect it looks sick it even has search functionality so i can search for a word or a name of note or anything like that it has a table of contents when you are on a note and you can also see the backlinks from any note the best thing about this entire project is that it's completely free to use it's open source and uh, yeah I'm um, excited to show you this so if we go ahead and check out the github page for course you can see that obsidian is actually one of the main sponsors it seems like which is kind of weird because obsidian has its own uh, publishing tool for creating websites out of your notes called obsidian publish and this costs eight dollars per month but it seems like they're supporting a course which is super sick i really like building personal websites and i have a custom build up and running so this is my website but i think that if i didn't really like fiddling around with building custom stuff then I would for sure build something using Quartz. So let's just uh, jump right into the documentation and uh, see how to get this up and running. So we are now on the documentation page of Quartz and I thought we would just run through the entire process of getting started together. So let's go ahead and run the first command here, which just clones the Quartz repository to our computer. I am going to be using my terminal ghosty. Feel free to use whatever you want. And I am going to create this project in source slash note. So feel free to put this wherever. Then I'm going to go ahead and clone the repository. So once that's done, we can go ahead and run ls and see that boom, we have this. And Further on, we go ahead and navigate into the repository. Then we install all dependencies using npm. And once that's done, we run this command npx quartz create. So you're going to get uh, three different options here. First one being empty quartz, which means that you are going to be creating an entirely new vault. So for this video, I think I'm going to do that. But what you can choose to do is copy an existing folder if you already have that. So if you're interested in seeing where your notes actually live, you can go ahead in Obsidian and hit manage vaults and you're going to see the path to your vault. So if you want to use your existing vault, that's uh, the path you're going to put here. But I'm just gonna hit empty course for now. Then we are going to treat links as shortest path. That's good. And boom, you are all set. So let's go ahead and try running this using the command npx quartz build dash dash serve. So running this is going to run the project on localhost 8080. Let's navigate to that and boom, we are up and running. Welcome to quartz. We got the... Uh, a link to the documentation and uh, yeah i guess this is our first note so from obsidian you would now want to add this folder as a vault so i'm gonna go ahead and hit open and then find where i put it and i put it in notes quartz and content that's the correct uh, folder you're looking for so with that open we got the index note and from here i can start writing something just like hello world 
boom and it's already updated that's fucking sick and from here you could of course create a new link to something like test note and you go are gonna get the link here but of course the note does not exist but if i go ahead and hit command enter and write something here this is a test note you can see that the link now works so yeah it's as easy as that to set things up and i think continuing we are gonna take a quick view at the syntax so of course supports something that's called front matter so if you want a little more control of the metadata of your notes you can go ahead and add this to the top of a given note just like that and from here you can customize the title so yeah example title is good for this then you can also flag it as a draft and you can add tag tag so for instance this could be at docs and uh, yeah this is a test note so one thing i would definitely do is create a template so if you go ahead and open settings and templates you could add your template folder so for instance we could call it 909 templates something like that so in the templates folder i went ahead and just created a note with the properties already added so if i now go ahead and create a new note and you can then hit insert template note and you can see that we have the front matter properties already pasted so that's a quick and easy way of doing that but also you don't need this so if you go ahead and do another <laughs> another test there's going to be a lot of tests here a lot a lot of tests you can see that this of course uh, also works so you don't need the front matter but it's nice to know of okay so let's go back to the plan what more did we want to cover yeah one thing i have noticed is that even with the development uh, server running it quite often breaks when you create a new note so let's say we create a note called math test and is it breaking now doesn't seem like it what if i change the title here yep it broke so just be wary of that and if you hit enable to connect you just have to restart the development server and it should be good to go now let's talk about theming so it's of course very important to make sure your obsidian application looks sick so if we go ahead and in obsidian Let's say we change to a cooler theme, something like Grovebox. I really like Obsidian Grovebox right here. We can do install and use. Our vault is now using this, but our course website still looks old and bland. So I actually found this project course themes and uh, yeah it proved to be super easy to install themes so they have a couple of different ways you can install themes either using github actions which actually is recommended here but i would go ahead and argue that just using the installer script is just as good so what you want to do is download this script in your project. So I would simply run this. And if we now hit LS, you can see that we have the action script. And using that, you can run the script and the name of the theme. So for me, that would be Obsidian Grovebox, since I really like that. We are installing the theme now. And if I now go ahead and start the project again, you can see that, boom, it's fully themed and yeah, it's as easy as that. And uh, other things we could customize is of course the page title here. Now, I would say that you don't even need to have too much programming experience to do these changes. I would simply search for the name here. So course four, it's uh, written. And maybe in this file, page title course four, we could rename it to something like Isaac's cool of obsidian vault something like that should be good and if we now reload this okay it seems like yeah of course i'm not running it if we now rerun the server and uh, open it isaac's cool obsidian vault so with everything being open source you could of course customize this however you want yeah i went ahead and looked at the quartz showcase and i found some pretty cool custom looking uh, sites so yeah just know that there are a bunch of uh, 
customizations you could be doing if you would want that okay so we have gone through the initial setup we have gone through theming and lastly a very important uh, part would of course be hosting so how would you go ahead and host this website so i guess i can first explain how this website is built so just like it says on the github rep repository this is a static site generator meaning that we are building this on our machine and then we can simply host it from wherever so we are going to get a bunch of static sites that's really easy to serve so what i would do is use github pages because it is free so i would go ahead and create a new repository and choose the correct owner then let's give it a name we can call it obsidian website just like that don't really need a description visibility i'm just gonna leave this for private as of now and note that if you do not have a pro github account you're gonna have to have it public to use github pages i'm pretty sure at least then we can go ahead and create the repository okay so once the repository is created we are going to go back to the command line and hit git remote dash v to list our origin so you can see that we of course cloned this from the course uh, project and what we have to do now is grab our own origin here and then run this command git remote set url origin and then our url so git remote set url origin and our own url just like that and i guess we can also run this last command and that already exists because it was up here but we can now run npx course sync no pull and with that we are syncing the project with our repository which makes it possible for us to actually host this so with that being done you can refresh your repository here and see that you are good to go if we go ahead and navigate to content you can see that all of our notes are here and to actually host this we are going to set up a github action that automatically runs every time we push to our repository so go ahead and copy this code and paste it into github workflows deploy.yaml let's first navigate to the github here and workflows and is it a deploy.yaml nope it isn't so we're going to create a new file deploy.yaml just like that we are going to paste our content save and you can now deploy these changes using npx course sync so we've now synced and we are now now going to run git push dash u origin main to push it up to our branch just like that and with that going we can see that we have the deploy workflow right here and we are now going to go over to settings pages deploy from branch we're going to select nope use a github action i actually get a message here saying that my repository has to be public so we are going to go ahead and change that really quick general and i think it's at the bottom here yeah change visibility to public make this repository public just like that so if we actually take a look at the action whoops like this you can see that on push to the branch v4 i think we are going to want to change this to be on push to main because that's what our branch is called yep it's called main so let's change this to main right here then we're going to run npx course sync and git push dash u origin main just like that and once that is pushed you can see that our action is now running so all we have to do now is wait for a minute or so and our changes should be deployed live on the internet which is super sick okay the build is complete it's now running the deploy segment right here deploying to github pages and boom it's deployed so if we go ahead and find the url for our websites you can find it under settings pages and we can go ahead and enter this and just like that we have deployed our website to the internet from our obsidian notes and lastly before i sign off i just got this idea that 
because we are actually just using Markdown and because I know that Markdown supports straight HTML, we can go ahead and try to implement a cool feature. So if we check out my website, I have recently created this web ring, which links around in a circle to different sites having their reading lists online. It's super cool. Some people from the Discord have already joined. And if we go ahead and yank this piece of code right here, we can create a new reading page. Books I have read, book one, something like that. And at the top of this page, we can go ahead and just enter the HTML directly, just like that. And we might have to actually close this the verbose way, just like this. And if I now go ahead and refresh this, you can see that we get this pop-up. This site isn't part of the website book club web ring yet, but it means that the script is working. And if I go ahead and add my URL to the web ring, just like this, which is something I can do. I'm pushing this and also we are of course going to run a quick sync and push in here. just like that. And now if we go ahead and go to the reading page and refresh, you can see that this site is part of the website book club web ring. So the button here takes it to my website and boom, we have the ring going just like that. So yeah, I really hope this is something you might consider doing. You can simply put this script, which you can find right here in your obsidian notes and uh, tell us about the books you have read and uh, yeah just like that we are making the internet a bit more fun i think so hopefully you have enjoyed this video if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join the discussion on discord where i have my own community so yeah people have been active on there talking about their coding experiences and such and uh, yeah see you in the next video